Eggs are quick, cheap, and easy, and if you don't have them in your fridge already, you probably should. Here are five easy ways to cook eggs perfectly every time. You don't need much for these first two preparations. All you need is a good non-stick skillet that doesn't have any scratches on it, a rubber spatula, some salt and pepper, and a good amount of butter. You want to use a non-stick skillet. Eggs are notoriously sticky because of all the protein and a lot of other stuff in there. And you also want to make sure that you're not using any metal utensils on the pan itself. First up, scrambled eggs, one of my personal faves. Scrambled eggs, there's a lot of different ways to cook them. This is the way that we prefer at the Tasty Kitchen. It's a great idea to crack them into a separate bowl first. One, in case you have any big chunks of eggshell in there. If any shell does get into the bowl itself, totally fine. Take an eggshell that you just cracked and use that to go in and get the shell out. While it might seem easier to crack them into the pan and scramble them in there, it's not really a good even way to do it. You'll have some big chunks of egg white, some big chunks of egg yolk. Just trust me, it's an easy bowl to clean. Just throw them in a bowl first and scramble them in there. So instead of adding milk or cream, we just use a lot of butter. You start with about two tablespoons of butter, get it nice and foamy in the pan, and when it's pretty much all the way melted, we're gonna season our eggs with a bit of salt and pepper and any other seasonings you want, and then into the pan. We wanna keep our heat pretty low here, and we're actually not gonna move the eggs at all until we kinda of see a little bit of the eggs setting on the sides of the pan. When you start to see a little bit of the eggs set, that's when you wanna take a rubber spatula, and from the outside in, push the eggs towards the center and kind of all around the pan so that all the eggs are cooking pretty evenly. When they're about three quarters of the way cooked, we're gonna do a real sneaky trick here and add a few cubes of butter. That's another tablespoon cut into fours or so. We're gonna melt those cubes of butter into the eggs themselves and they're gonna kind of emulsify, sort of, this like creamy, nice, melty, -ness into the scrambled eggs and they add this like really beautiful creamy texture at the end. So we recommend taking them off a little bit before you think. The residual heat within the eggs will continue to cook them until they're the perfect doneness. I mean, it definitely takes an art and takes a little bit of time to get the scrambled egg right, but there's just something so good about it. It just kind of like hits all those salty, creamy, fatty notes for me, and I just really, really love having scrambled eggs. The fried egg. I think people are afraid of fried eggs. I don't know, there's like so many different ways to do it. It's like, should the pan be high heat? Should it be low? How do you get that perfect color? We're gonna do ours on a medium heat for the fried egg. So add butter to the pan, uh, add your egg into the butter. So you want it to be hot enough that the egg white is kind of setting when it goes in. Let it start cooking, and you wanna make sure that it's not so hot that the egg white itself is like going all over and boiling like crazy. Add just a few drops of water at this point and immediately cover with a lid. And that's gonna create a good amount of steam in the pan. So it's gonna help cook the egg white without being on such a high heat that the egg yolk will cook through as well. At that point, you know, once it's cooked for a few minutes, you have the world's most picture-perfect egg. Really yellow, vibrant yolk. The white is cooked through. There's none of that weird, like, snotty bit that no one likes, <laughs> like, undercooked egg white. Um, it just takes maybe a minute or two with that steam on top, and then you have a picture-perfect egg. I mean, you could Instagram that. There's a million things on the internet of, like, how to get the perfectly hard-boiled egg. We've tested a whole bunch and this is our tried and true method to get your perfect boiled egg every time. You wanna put them over medium high heat because you wanna bring them to a boil, but you want it to kind of happen slowly. So similar to potatoes, we're doing this because we want them to cook really evenly. We don't want the outside to cook for the inside can. Once it's at a rolling boil, you wanna take it off the heat, cover and set your timer between four and 16 minutes, depending on how you like your yolks cooked. And then once they're cooked to your liking, you wanna immediately take the eggs out and put them into a nice bath. That's gonna stop the cooking right away to make sure that your yolk is gonna be cooked to your preference. If you leave them in the hot water or just like take them out of the hot water and don't cool them down, then you'll get that like really weird chalky, like grayish green yolk, which we don't want. And just as a visual, here are eggs cooked at all of these different times. You can see how much softer the yolk is at four minutes, whereas 16 it's completely cooked through. You can just cut them in halves or quarters, throw them right on top of the salad. They add like a nice amount of color and freshness, I think. They're also a really good snack as well, but there's a million different recipes you can use for hard boiled eggs. Poached. All right, so for poaching eggs, which I honestly don't think is too scary, you wanna use a big pot of water. There's just like more room for the egg to kind of move around. And you wanna make sure that your pot of water is, <laughs> I know this sounds crazy, but like at a hard simmer. Like you don't want it so boiling that the water is really disruptive and it's gonna shake the egg a ton. But if it's not moving at all, then the egg will just completely sink to the bottom and there won't be any movement rolling that egg white over the egg yolk. 
Similar to scrambled eggs, you're always gonna wanna make sure that you're cracking your eggs into a bowl first. And then we're gonna do a whirlpool trick. So you're gonna stick your spoon in, swirl the water, and then that center whirlpool is where we're gonna drop our egg into. As it's slowing down is when you wanna add your egg. If it's still going too heavy, if the whirlpool's too fast, then the egg's just gonna be like, whoa. You wanna let the egg go and do its thing in there until you kind of can't see any of that translucent egg white anymore. With a poached egg, you want the egg yolk to still be quite runny. But again, no one wants like a runny egg white. And that is a poached egg. So we're gonna blot it, get all the extra water off there, and then you're ready to eat. So that's the traditional method. But if you were doing a whole bunch, we've got a trick for you. So instead of a big deep pot, we're just gonna use like a saute pan that has flat sides like three or four inches deep that you can put some of these heat safe glass bowls and have them completely covered in water. And for this one I can do like three, maybe even four at a time depending on how big your bowls are and how big your pot is. And then same deal, you wanna crack your eggs into a separate dish. But what I'm gonna do is actually go from one dish to another. And what that bowl is gonna do is it's gonna keep the egg contained in that space. This is cool because you can get a nice rounded shape every time but it's gonna look a little bit different than your classic poached egg. If you're just doing this for your friends and family at home, I don't think anyone will mind. It'll still taste the same. It's easier for you to do a whole bunch of them. And then it's a little less intimidating way to approach poached eggs. Really good, nice, soft, delicate way to have an egg. And it's also kind of an impressive way to serve something that's pretty cheap. I love poached eggs. Yeah, are poached your favorite? Wait. I, don't, I think my problem is I don't have a favorite. I like them all. If I had children, they'd be eggs. Can't really choose one, right? Depends on the day. 